between Sim Gaming and Legacy Esports. You know, I don't think I, I... I was really surprised. I thought the Legacy, especially after their last week's performance, going to come and crush it. Game two, they did do that. Game one, faltering. Now heading into game three, I guess it's a best of one in a sense. Like, what are we looking at here out of both of these teams? I mean, the big question for me is if Legacy are going to do the same bans they did last game. Because game one, they lost to the pick comp. And then game two, they just banned the Thresh. They banned the Ash. Like, they wanted none of that. <laughs> so I'm just wondering if they're going to do the same thing and be like, all right, like, we, we can beat your, like, 1-3-1 one, one comp. Like... Is it harder to do on red side? Because we say this all the time. At blue side, you get to throw some of those target bans out. Uh... Red side, like, you've got to get rid of the Vlad, Rise. Like, there's a couple of others I in mean, there as well. It works like that a bit, but then you're also on red side, so they can get one priority, whereas, like, you can get two. Like, so it depends how both teams want to play, like, the pick ban phase, but mm. it can be risky on red side, leaving so many picks open. Yeah, that's that's something that I'm really wondering, right? Do they go back to the 1-3-1? One, one? Like, they, there are so many questions towards, like, how is game three going to play out in terms of, like, how do they pick ban, like, both teams? And so I think they... I think th they can't put in those three bans. Maybe they can stick to the rise, right? But they can't ban, like, the Ash, I don't believe. Mm. So that's Well, in my opinion, I think they can leave, the, like, the rise, mm -hmm. and then they still just get rid of, like, the Ash and the Thresh because those were more of, like, a big component of, yeah. like, that pick comp. Whereas, like, rise was kind of just like, all right, you're rise. You can just do a lot of consistent damage, like... We'll set you up, you just kill them. All right, cool. Outside of the pick ban phase, I want to actually progress to the early game. Yeah. You know, lane swap, no lane swap, because we've seen Sin, they seem to know their way around the map a little bit, but, you know, getting a little bit caught up in these standard lanes, do you reckon they just get the deep vision in, Raz, you know, try and get into the one, th uh, the three versus nothing waves? Yeah, I want to see that come out, because I actually do, as I said before, right, I don't believe in um, Legacy's overall map play, right? So... I want them to challenge them in that. Don't get caught up in the laning phase. If you want to play your comp, play to your comp. And that it makes it a lot easier if you just lane swap it. Yeah, and I mean, in lane swaps, like one small mistake can lead to like a big advantage. So, and Sin have proven that if they get like a small pick or something that they can snowball it. So maybe going for a lane swap is good for them. Because if they capitalize on that, like, a small mistake, they can snowball the game. All right, we'll see whether they can capitalize on it or whether Legacy will reign supreme. Guys, we are ready to get onto Summoner's Rift for game number three between Sin and Legacy. For, so for one last time, let's check in with our shoutcasters, Rogi and Rusty. Thank you so much, Spawn. And we saw two completely different games out of these teams. So I'm hoping game three falls somewhere in the middle so we can see these guys really fighting it for the winner of the series. Yeah, the thing is, it can never really fall in the middle because the ban phase prevents that. <laughs> That's the it, right? second game was entirely that from Legacy, denying Sin's strategy that worked against them. True. I'm going to say ultimately unexpected in that strategy. Game two comes around and Legacy stock standard through laning phase just dismantled Sin from the very beginning. Yeah, Carbon just helping choose get ahead time and time again. Once he had that double buffs at level three, it was kind of the story of the game. And King just got further and further ahead off lane phase alone. And Thresh getting banned away. Quick bans once again. So maybe we might see a repeat here. And that's the big strategy that we actually needed to address. The Analyst Death actually covered it quite well. Sin want lane swaps. Legacy definitely wants standard lanes. I think it's playing to the team's strengths in that Legacy, by design, have three winning lanes. Sin have always been a team that can play the map well. And that's where the conflict should actually be. And that they actively search for a lane swap. So Sin, by banning out this Vladimir here, they kind of know that Legacy going to target the three bans once again. Does that just mean they just don't want to play Vlad at all? It means they want to first pick Rek'Sai and they don't want to play the Vladimir. I think priorities, honestly, I would say take the Rek'Sai. Cool. Unless they desperately want the Rise or something like that, but that's always going to be banned from them. They just didn't have another option. No surprise that there, by the sound of it, as Rek'Sai gets locked in for Juve. So, saw him on Nidalee in game number one and two, but taking that one away from Carbon. Will he default to the Graves? Elise, Gragas, and Nidalee are all still available, so does have quite a few champions to pick from. Carbon's a big fan of the Graves. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't shock me to see him go back to it again. I would imagine the immediate change, though, if we compare games one and two, is that they might even early rotate King onto the Sivir or something to that extent to keep him comfortable, keep him safe, give wave clear to the team. Battle they could once again, honestly, even look towards Choo Choo's and counter pick Vitaly. Very cool stuff coming in here in game number three. Let's see what Legacy decide to go with. We know their laners are very, very strong and they like to utilize that to their advantage. And once again, same bot lane as last game. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. See the Siva and the Braum. Yeah, as mentioned, they want to keep them 
to what worked. Mm. It should be playing towards strengths, and we might get a happy medium because the Rek'Sai was taken away. Carbon has to change things up. We'll see what direction he goes towards. But for now, Legacy, they've picked the winning bottom lane. And the expectation from Sin is still probably along the lines of the Jin, given that the Ashes Band and the Sivir is taken. Well, they surprised us all in game well, number one. Well, they surprised us all in game number one with the pick comp. Maybe they've got something they've been saving for game number three. Could be Ezreal. Cool. Could be worth looking at. I think Rogue on that Bard was a standout feature. It was actually fantastic. But their game three comp is always different. It's because Rogue always goes back to his best. Yeah, going on that Alistar here. And they're taking away the Victor so they know that some of the issues they had was that wave control and wave clear. And answering that with the Victor, very smart adaptation for Sin Gaming here. Yeah, so Sin, they... They are literally like a happy middle ground between mm. games one and two, taking what works for them in the rec side, being that global influence that they want to have. I would even imagine a Shen as a last rotation for their top laner again. But they've got the Victor from Choose, the rec side from Carbon, and the Alistar to have hard engage or a tank option in that team. They know it's against the Braum, so as far as laning phase is concerned, Alistar, generally speaking, struggles. They might want to shore up that weakness once again by swapping out of it and avoiding them. Sure. And we'll see how they go. Looking forward to seeing Sin initiate some of those massive combos. Alistar goes in Chaos Storm on top of that, but Choose, no hesitation, locks in that Cassiopeia, and Carbon finds himself the Elise. Yeah, so Carbon going back to his Elise. It was the Game 3 against the Chiefs pick where he went 0, 4, and 10 and did basically zero damage, but did enough for the team to help them get over the line. And it's about empowering Choo Choo's. Having that scaling champion in the middle lane that will always do a lot of damage to keep them going. And just keep trucking. Well, great stuff out of Legacy in the last few weeks, sir. Look for them to really have an understanding of how to play around this Cassiopeia. And once again, Squiggle gets himself the Shen. It was quite good last game, despite the eventual outcome. But they do go for that Ezreal on ramps. So no Jin. An incredibly predictable team composition from Sin. The Victor's the only standout as a difference because mm -hmm. they don't have something like the Diana to have the Shen ultimate complement it. But they've got the Victor away from Chu, something that Rhymeister will be perfectly fine on. It just doesn't feel entirely Sin now. It's like one piece of that puzzle is not there. Legacy's still doing them. They have their top laner here. Aurelia and Jax both available, but they... We struggle a little bit against Shen, if my memory serves me correctly, of the last few matches. But of course, the Troll King himself, Trundle, still available and really struggles against no one. And to be fair, Jax does well against Shen. It's the Aurelia that does struggle in mm -hmm. particular. The Trundle, though, is this really good middle ground where they have a tank because Elise is in the jungle and it's probably going to be Runic Echoes. They needed something else. And Trundle, by pressing his R key, provides that. Actually saps away a lot of resistances from Sin's team composition. Choose and King have a lot of damage, but it's medium to low ranged, and that's the big risk that Legacy now run with their team composition. If you can get into the back line, you can kill them. Because they are reasonably low ranged, and Victor's burst will get onto them easy. They have the potential to set up some really big combos here. Alistar goes in, Shen Taunt, Chaos Storm, you name it. Not to mention Jubes with the potential for multi-man knockups. So we saw game number one completely pick comp, they just went all in, backed each other well, and then game number two, they just couldn't really find their footing, so I want to see them kind of go back to that where one person goes in, they all just follow up with the damage, and really just layer them on top of each other. Yeah, and that's what Sin have put together. It's yeah. not so much the old school Sin Wombo that we're used to seeing from them, but sure. it's definitely an abundance of damage that can all just be They've dropped down at once to follow up any initial engages. There's no Thresh to be seen as it's banned though, so Alistar engages are a little bit more all in and committal, and so if they make the call to go, they have to go. It's going to be difficult for them to get past that Cassiopeia, don't forget. But if you want to see Sin take the OBL Legend titles from Legacy, hashtag Sin winner if you think Legacy are the ones deserving of that high, pri uh, that high prize, hashtag LGC win. You must say Sin coming out of that first game looked like an entirely different team. They yeah. looked back in form and then game two comes around, Legacy bite back. Unsurprising to see Legacy do that, of course, but Sin, they still even had moments of brilliance within that game where the Zed-Shen combo was coming up out, or coming okay, really. Mm -hmm. This game three, it's all on the line again. Sin, they said they want the belt. 
This is their only chance now to take it. That's exactly right. The belt in contention here tonight. Game number three of series number two, Sin Gaming taking on Legacy. No one thought that Sin could make it that far. They just got to make it a little bit further to prove everyone wrong. And one game's not the set. They are one game closer than a lot of teams in the OPL. As honestly, a fifth against second doesn't feel like that moving into the third game. You're exactly right. They showed us something completely new. Then they went standard, and then even more standard at that. So Sin going back to their roots, showing us the League of Legends that they love to play. So to be fair, my concern with them going back to their roots is that they've looked worse when they've had Rhymeister on a control mage. Sure. Game one was good. Game two was good for Rhymeister in particular. Mm -hmm. And now this really challenges the entire team of can he still do his part on this control mage against Chuchus, who's got a arguably better late game version of him. And it all starts with, once again, do they lane swap? Do they standard lanes? And how does this eventuate? I saw Ting, uh, King did take the Warlord's Bloodlust, so maybe they want to go for these standard lanes here and just kind of accept that he's going to get poked out quite a bit. Well, King's one of those champions. That, uh, sorry, Siva is one of those champions that will always go Warlord's Bloodlust for the most part anyway. Sure. So it's not exactly surprising to see it. But yes, against an Ezreal, you do get poked. Already trades coming back and forth. Cassiope hits a nice cube, gives us some movement speed. And I like, I think I like about Cassiope is you can get six true items here, not having to buy boots, getting an eight movement speed off your passive. It was a, um, a conversation, I believe it was Senkooks mm. from the EULCS about Cassiope and his opinion on the changes. Sure. How often do you see a mid laner actually get to six items is the question, right? And yes, it becomes efficient the later level you get for your passive, giving you move speed, but boots are a super efficient early game item because of the stats they provide and the move speed they immediately provide. You see time and again, most players now in competitive rush boots. And that's where Cassiopeia actually has a fault. But you get to late game, the closer you get to that six item mark, the bigger, the better you scale. Mm, that's a great point to make. There are such vast differences between playing the game socially competitive and playing the game professionally competitive and these slight small differences that you just don't think are that important can really mean life or death in a lane. I guess a victor as well who has his own means of speeding himself up. Yeah. Funnily enough, these champions are aligned in different ways. Of course, they meet at the middle with scaling. So mm -hmm. Victor has a lot of early strength, a lot of early lane control, usually. Something that Cassiopeia can meet with. And they both scale. Carbon's pulling a juice. Yeah, we saw and this kind of juice last game, but this time Carbon is the first on scene. Reacts with the chomp juice. He's going to have to flash out of this one, I think. Carbon's laying down the red Whoa. buff. They both flash simultaneously. It's not going to be enough as Juves gets himself to safety under tower. But this is Q for Carbon to take what is rightfully his. Yeah, and good awareness from Juves actually to flash at the same time as Carbon's Q being back off cooldown shows his awareness of the champion and his jungle knowledge. Doesn't die, but he was caught out doing the buff, and for what it's worth, Juves got it. Very, very close play. Playing it safe, though. And the good thing about this, like why Carbon's able to do this, mm -hmm. is because Juves is controlling mid. That's a great if point to mention. isn't controlling mid, Rhymeister can rotate, and that could be where the Elise engage or invade backfires. Yeah, it reminds me back to the Diamond Prox days where people think, how do you jungle, counter jungle so efficiently? He says, well, my lanes all win. They will come and help me if I find myself in trouble. As we see Rai and Chu's just trading blows, but Cassiope has a little bit of an easier time now with that improved E to just get those last hits, a little bit of mana back as well. Low start once again. This is where Legacy want to be, though, if you consider that second game. Laning phase went for about 14 to 15 minutes in the second. It was accelerated to about eight in the first. So we'll see how this goes as Juves now looks towards the middle lane on Choo Choo's. Yeah, Summoners are up. No flash available now that he just used it. Uh, Juves is there. Quite low on mana was Choo's forcing the escape. Right, did use his exhaust in that one. Yeah. Carbon was close by. But completely out of mana was Chu, so there was no even possibility of a turnaround no. trade. He had overstayed a little bit there on the Cassiopeia. These two now are just going to hit each other. Just trading blows here. Good trade from Squiggle, but remember, Tally does have that King's Tribute. We'll be healing up with every death. Yeah, and hadn't of used the stack of his Corrupting Potion. Oh, so Tally will be perfectly fine. I think one big thing to note is that they did still essentially get the double summoner spells out of the mid lane of Legacy, mm -hmm. whereas Rhymeister has his flash and come that level six point. Possibility for outplays now. Rhymeister can work with Juves, the dynamic duo. 
against the OG. Looks like Choose went back and bought himself that early tier. Does like to have a very deep mana pool when playing that Cassiopeia allows for you to stand her spells quite efficiently without worrying too much about running dry on mana. Of course, yeah. Choose smites away the Raptors, does have that true side available to him now. He's about to find two people, however. Let's have the Tremor Sense. That does no damage anymore, does it? The W? Yeah, the Miasma. Gets stunned up here, though. Lazarai to get back before copping a few Twin Fangs to the face. Should just be able to laser this wave down quite quite efficiently. We still cop two lasers. Uh, sorry, Twin Fangs, to be fair, and they mm -hmm. do a lot of damage. And yes, the W doesn't hurt, but... Oh, no, he's going to be on. in trouble here with no escape. Gets Cocoon up, Smiter down. First Blood going over to choose. He's not done yet. Gets a petrifying gaze. Juve now in full retreat. One more Twin Fang should do it. A double kill and Legacy start the game off swinging. Choo Choo Z ticking level 6 from the kill onto Rhymeister as if to add insult to injury because Juve was not ready for that. And the gank from Carbon completely keeping Rhymeister into a choke point where he had flash but didn't even get it off. Does Miasma, because it's got that uh, movement cancelling thing, it stops flash? I believe so. Shen also oh. used the ultimate, yeah. so he may have thought that he was alive. Communication I can't speak for on Sin. I didn't expect that much burst to come out of them either, but whenever somebody's poisoned, the amount of bonus damage they get from Twin Fangs is increased by a lot. Well, this game is looking very similar to the last. Choose already sitting on 2 and 0. Picked himself up with the Null Magic Mandle, the Negatron Cloak. So already going to have a much easier time laning against Rai, who can outrange him, but really going to be struggling to find his footing. Yeah, he's going to have a pretty rough time. Of course, he has boots now, so he'll feel a bit better about himself because he can buy them. <laughs> you know, in the, in the game of BM, I'm sure he's winning that one. And he's still only level one boots, so they're not that fancy just yet. I like the mental image of Cassiope here wearing boots on her head. Oh, King, beautifully timed spell shield, actually blocks a full combo out of Rogue. You might want to fight this. Nice sidestep, avoids the Winter's Bite, and just backs off out of it. I actually think King should have ulted there. He had the level 6 advantage, something the Rogue didn't have. He was doing a lot of damage himself. It would have helped Kuden actually auto-attack instead of having to hit the Q that got juked by Rogue. Either way, they don't get it. Maybe still just a little bit surprised. I'm getting startled in the bush, but we have the reaction time here. We see the ghost coming out of Choose Carbon, just flashes over, sinks the fangs in, gets himself a kill. Squiggle with the reaction teleport cancels it immediately, and this game is not looking good for Sin's mid lane. Yeah. Ryan Meister not playing an assassin feels entirely different, but this time around it's Legacy actually picking on him. Working around the major point of power that Sin have, their win conditions usually through the middle lane, and Rhymeister, he's still going to be able to wave clear. He is a victor that can just throw down a laser, clear an entire wave. But because there is a 2-0-1 Cassiopeia opposing him, it becomes a bit harder to do. Both times Squiggle actually expending his cooldowns to try and save the mid laner, and both times unsuccessful to say the least. And now Tally... They're diving this. There's four people strong. Yeah, this is looking bad. Squiggle with no hope of surviving this one. The pillar goes down to start the dive. Carbon is there. He has a flash available. The Winter's Fight not going to land, but Squiggle kind of accepting his fate here. And who's that going to go to? Is going to King. On the uh, flip side, Choo Choo's actually found himself up uh, in trouble as Rogue barreling down on this one. One more laser should do it. Can they find it? Flash Q secures it. But it looks like Legacy going to get themselves that top tower. Yeah, well done to get the kill in the middle lane here from Sin. Rogue comes up huge. No summoners available for choose. It's literally about to tick over as we speak. But meanwhile, on that top lane, the four-man execute. Trundle, the beauty of a tower dive is that you always get aggro just by pressing your ult. And the marginal amount of damage that it does do forces that onto you and you don't die. Shen, he had no way out. No teleport, no ultimate, no point flashing. Two and a half K gold in the lead art legacy right now. So once again, just steamrolling through this early game. Looks like they want this Ocean Drake now that they have four members, three actually, as Choose is making his way back down that mid lane. They've got that top tower off the back of that dive and can Sin fight for this one is the question. I don't think they want to fight for it. It looks like Raps is just going to try and steal it. Juves isn't just going to recall as well, so we'll see how he goes. Ulti comes through at about 700 health. Not going to matter those carbon secures it with the smite. 
Yep, so they lock that one down, and that's a Drake now. So an objective in the back pocket of Legacy. And for what it's worth, the Ocean Drake on a team that they've currently put together, and an early Ocean Drake at that is actually so beneficial to Legacy. It's not an Infernal, something that we're used to seeing. Mm -hmm. Finally, we're going to have a change-up of Dragon Spawn. Yeah, it feels like it's just been raining fire down on this game. Fire and ocean. The next That's one's it. actually a Cloud Drake. Lo and behold, the useless of the Drake. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't seen him all uh, series along in this one. Hey, earlier, I remember the Elise getting that Cloud Drake movement speed buff and was able to skewer a kill. Yeah, there was one. <laughs> <laughs> the one out of, like, 50 kills. It's like the Jester of the King's Court. You know? You appreciate that it's there. Ultimately, it's not necessary. It's Choo Choo's is actually the big problem again. It's it's 2-1 to 1-2. There's still farm on Rai Mai stuff. That's fine. But thinking about uh, historically what Choo Choo's has been able to do on this Cassiopeia, once that Abyssal Scepter's done, he's scaled. Uh, he's already able to 1v1 people. We've seen Juice a few times actually just come mid, walk in and walk out where there is really no kill pressure right now as Tear is stacking, has the magic resistance to survive some of the onslaught from Rai. If Rogue makes his way up, maybe they can make something happen, but... I mean, they can and they have, but because both summoners are there now, it's a lot harder to do. Mm. Come down to choose hitting the ulti. Even then, I think he might be able to turn around kill pressure because he's about to have that Abyssal. That's exactly right. Where is Rogue? He's looked like he was making his way up in the mid now, just going to clear out some wards. Maybe play some of his own in the meantime. Ryan Meister doing what he can to push up this mid lane. Tally's actually there. Those Juice Carmen. waiting off in the wing, gets bounced back in. There is Squiggle with the ultimate. Rogue's there, gets the knock up onto Carb and Tally tanking for all it's worth. There is the bot lane from both teams coming in hard. First one to fall is the victor. Rogue gets himself out alive. Now Squiggle on the wrong side of the map flashes. The Q's still gonna land, but five members of Legacy are chasing him down. Oh, he looks for the carbon kill. No, nope. no, nope. nah, not gonna get it. Get stunned up by the brawn passive with a cute little taunt back through to try and trade one for one. Not gonna happen. And Legacy, once again, choose the fight and back it well. Rogue, I don't know what to say here, mate. So I'll just let you die in peace. Good night, sweet Rogue. You were so young. 1 8 is the scoreline. Sin, I don't think they're actually done defending this. Ooh. Raps is done defending this. <laughs> Legacy, though. Big picks, big fights, out trading people in a situation where Tally honestly looked like he couldn't do it. They won't get the turret, but that gold lead stretches more and more. And it feels like they're maybe closing the door on Sin's opportunity to get that legend belt. That's exactly right here is Legacy. When they press that go button, everyone is there to back them up. Sin, they had great presence in that team fight as well, but it wasn't enough. Choose when he gets in with that petrifying gaze, starts laying down the damage with the Twin Fangs. There's really no one that can stand against him right now. Painful to watch. He's huge. And yes, Tally also going Titanic Hydra it means he had the tanky route. Very hard to actually kill him. Whilst he was massively out of position to start that fight off. Carbon going my favorite Elise build. That's the Snowball Elise build. Yeah, proto Bell. The uh, makings of a Proto Belt here. So look for him to be making plays left, right and center like he isn't enough already. It'll be much, much more. Yeah, Nidalee and Elise actually benefit a lot from Proto Belt. It's pretty cool. It's a cool item to see, which seemed like a gimmick for quite some time on the PBE. Then all of a sudden, a few champions. Can do well in it, Kuden. He's been picked, but all of a sudden they turn the attention around. Rogue with no ulti just gets destroyed as Carbon picks himself up. Another one now, Legacy. Turn their attention to his bot lane tower. Map control well and truly in their favor. Sin actually put four people straight towards this middle lane. Choo Choo's has no summoners, so we'll see how he plays it. But I don't think he can defend. I would imagine Legacy's immediate response to this is actually to keep pushing with Carbon and four mana, but they don't even have a minion wave. It's a really interesting predicament that they found themselves in, and a good movement from Sin. Yeah, they're going to lose themselves this mid lane tower, but they are up a considerable amount of gold. 6,000, 5,000 and a half at the moment. Legacy with one extra tower to their name, but eight extra kills, and four of those sitting on that mid lane to choose right now. Such a large amount of gold in favor of Legacy. They have well and truly started their snowball. Sin to bounce back in this game require a lot of good plays from here. It's not to the point where they need to be picture perfect, but they need to make sure that every decision they make is the right one. 
And so the experienced shot calling of Sid needs to bear fruit. Exactly right here. And it's going to be difficult nonetheless. Uh, we saw in the first series where Avant so far ahead, even after misplay after misplay, it was Hellions that just couldn't find their way back in. I feel like this is a similar story right now as Legacy playing the game perfectly, but don't have those uh, overconfidence issues. Yeah, they've got the chokehold. them down. And truly there. He's waiting for the suffocation to set in. Oh no, Rogue once again fought out. Does have the ultimate this time, but I don't think it's going to matter as Choose just laying down the pain has to flash to keep himself alive. And this Alistar just not doing what the Thresh could. Yeah, thankfully for Sin, Rogue lives. And the problem with the Alistar pick is that Legacy have snowballed against it. And so he is just a fragile champion who's constantly blowing his ultimate off cooldown. Oh no, Rap gets hit by the Cocoon. Is it enough to get the kill? No. Arcane shifts out of that one. Keeps yeah. himself alive. Has the Frostborn Gauntlet. Speaking of fragile, Raps, <laughs> even with armor, has nothing he can do against all of the magic damage that comes out of an Elise and the Cassiopeia. The neutral objective control that they both have as well. There's just so few avenues of attack for Sin. Right now, they've even got Jews on the top side of the map trying to work with Rymeister. Holding their hands is a good way to go about it, but it's not going to win them the game. We're even going to get the tower, as a matter of fact, as Tally is enough to just scare them away. Dragon goes down as well, so two dragons right now in favor of Legacy. It's got an ocean and a cloud. So now choose. It's got a pseudo boot. It's got some pseudo boots on at the moment. Yeah, and Frank the Ocean Drake will be the next one as well. It is looking very, very good for Legacy. Named him Frank. <laughs> Any particular reason why, Rusty? Yeah, he's a singer. <laughs> <laughs> ah, of course. Took me a while, but I got there. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> yeah, we just see constantly Choose. He's just pushing up. Nothing really right can do but hold the lane until Choose gets back to push it some more. So Legacy, they've got their sights set on this Rift Herald now. Yeah, from buff to buff. Tally. It's basically coast to coast victory at the moment for Legacy. Start of the dragon, they get a kill maybe on the way through occasionally. They go back to the Rift Herald and that is on Tally. So he's going to be even stronger than what he currently was. Which means that split pushing against him for Squiggle is not exactly the easiest thing to do. And at this point in the game, at 18 minutes, it's a good time for Legacy to break that laning phase completely. Start accelerating the pace of this game through having side lane threat from Tally. So they've got a few members here in this bot lane, but the recall's coming out of Rogue and Juves. Uh, Juves actually going to cancel that one to help Raps try and take down this tower. Should have enough time as it looks like Tally just backing off for now. Yeah, Legacy are responding though. On the opposite side of the map, you That's can right. see three people moving there. So Sin will get this. Tally will respond and hold from this point. The question is, what do Legacy now respond with? Because an outer for an inner still favors them. They can get it, which they can't. There's a Chaos Storm down onto three members. They're just going <laughs> to jump out of that one. Carbon tries to get himself to safety with the Proto Belt. <laughs> That's a fast moving spider. Used defensively then. Yeah, it's a 40 second cooldown. You can already see it coming <laughs> close enough to being back. Look at the cooldown go on the Proto Belt. Great item. A lot of fun. You can rinse and repeat that strategy. So that was the Victor ultimate used, Rek'Sai as well. There's no Ezreal ultimate to be seen. And Legacy have now got themselves in a position of power if they wish to utilize it. If not, out of spike time. Tally sitting about 30 or so CS above his opposition here. Poor Squiggle, 0-2-0 at the moment. Or Tally sitting on 1-0-5. So despite being having one of the easiest ways to assist your teammates with that Stand United. Sin can't really find any advantageous fights this game. There's no way to utilize him effectively at the moment. Squiggle looks for an ultimate. Tally's going to take your turret. And the way that the map is currently situated is that even if you get the pick, you're probably going to lose an objective for it, and you'll never get one back yourself. We're not even... We're just about to tick the 20-minute mark. It feels like Legacy have such high rate of control. I wouldn't be surprised to see Sin get a pick and then do nothing with it. You could potentially see that here as Legacy. They've got themselves poison ready around the Baron. Yeah, and for the record, it is a Cassiopeia composition. So they can look to make picks around the Baron, which is the ideal first strategy. If they ever start it up, their damage is already done. 
comes in on the hunt. Rogue, he's gone in, but he popped the ulti immediately. Teleport in the back line for Tally. Choose gets knocked up. Riker thinking very low. Has to walk out of this fight. Carbon does get stunned up. The laser coming through. Choose, he's still Lakers alive though. Choose with a him. nice knockup. It's not going to matter though. Tally, he's now in the fight. Two kills, three. As a matter of fact, Rai falls soon after four. The zero to Legacy. Yeah, two to King, two to Tally, and Legacy team fight well, recognizing those summoners are still on cooldown. And so with the ultimates, they actually take them out. That'll be the inhibitor most likely broken with a long period of time to work the map. I think it'll just be the inhibitor though. We have five seconds, four counting down for Rogue to get back in this to ensure that they don't take the Nexus that easy. But it is. Uh, it gives the Baron a very real possibility for Legacy to take. Yeah, and it's timed well because they can go for the Drake immediately after recalls. The fight you can see choose. Keeping Rymeister at bay, he had a very rough fight. Didn't really get anything done. Actually doesn't even drop his ultimate throughout this. And this is the tally show. King's just hitting people consistently. And because they're so clumped together, it means that he's hitting absolutely everybody with that ricochet damage. Well done to Legacy, executing that fight at an individual level. Not sure why he didn't just drop the Chaos Storm there. He get ample opportunities to do so. Maybe just overthinking Or he just assumed he didn't actually have it up again. Ah. Because it was recently off cooldown. I'm not sure. Sure. Everyone's got their reasons. I'm sure Rymeister has his. Right now, Legacy are very scary. A nice, cool 10,000 gold in the lead. 22 minutes in this game, sitting on 12 kill, uh, 13 kills to one. Now Baron, a very realistic possibility. Not even going to scan it out. So, yeah. so they do have full vision of this one. They know it is on a ward, and so they can look to fight for it once again, though, using that Sivir ulti. On the hunt has been popped. Never mind. Does cause Sin to just retreat. Once again, the ward still being cheeky. No one thinking to scan it out, but Kuden and choose running point. Juve's off to the wings, trying to get in. Raps is chucking down Q's willy-nilly. Squiggle's still in the bot lane, pushing in the meantime. This is fine for Sin. They can sit here and play this game and watch Legacy die to the Baron. Chuchu's needs to be hitting it if they want to secure it. And the pit needs to be cleared by Fission before you constantly say go. Legacy hitting it. They've committed to this one. Yeah, they really need to right now. Carbon, he's quite Shen's low, but in. low half. Here comes Shen Juice. He's got his way in. Carbon, very, very low, but that causes Juice to back out. A nice Chaos Storm on top of everyone. The stun goes down. Kuden in a lot of trouble. Tally might be the first to fall. Wrapped off in the back line, but now Tally has his sight set. Exhaust coming down from Rogue. Beautifully timed the knockup. Shutdown gold actually goes across. Two kills now. Juice in a world of hurt. Doesn't have the ultimate to keep him safe. Juice with a beautiful knockup. And Sin answer back with Legacy. Just scan the damn pit. Sin get three big kills and it's next to the Baron pit, so it looks like they have to actually keep Carbon around. It's going to be steal a clock if they're going to get anything from this. There isn't even vision on it. Carbon's going to have to pull out a miracle. Nothing short of it. Ooh, on the hunt is available. This could be turn for King to go. Huge rogue pops the ultimate. Not going to be That's enough. As Carbon takes him down. Here comes King. Where King. are the ricochets? Looking for the triple. Doesn't get it. He's going to have to back out. As now Rymeister comes in with no mana. The Baron still goes over to the side of Sin Gaming. They get the Baron. They kill Carbon with it. And once again, Sin have actually brought themselves closer to being in this game. This is, of course, the fight that they win. And look at the way that Raps plays this. Because honestly, he keeps Chews busy for long enough that Chews forces an ultimate onto not enough people. It's actually just Juves and Squiggle that he connects with. Rymeister's Chaos Storm destroys them. Tally gets bloodthirsty. The laser picks up Kuden in the back end. They team fought that well, Sin. They've shown that they have the capabilities to do so. Between the tankiness of Juves and Squiggle, the damage of Raps poking at the side and mostly Rymeister. It's exactly what they needed, but Legacy gifted that fight to them because they lost most of their health and mana pool to the damn Baron. They, ca they catch up about 4,000 gold now. So it's Sin found an avenue back into this game and this is very reminiscent of the first game of the night, Rusty. Right, so the 6,000 gold lead is still large and they are still pressuring the bottom side of the map. They've already got the mid inhibitor down, so Legacy are in control of this game, but Sin are trying to bring it closer. We've lost the tower. Carbon's dead. Yeah, he just gets taunted back in and everyone's there with their home guard. Just blow him up. What a manly man Carbon <laughs> is. Every time I watch this guy play Elise, it's like, no, I wouldn't do that if I was him, but he does it. He thinks he's Rek'Sai. 
You said it before. They got the turret. Like, that's Truth? absolutely great, but it looks like they pushed themselves past that turret. Is Fuse is top. Ooh, not going to interrupt. Okay. That's a shame to see, but he will have He's a second attempt at it. <laughs> Some of those thick walls are a little bit difficult to go through on your first attempt, so... Juves is here now with wraps. Squiggle just keeping Tally busy, even with that Rift Herald buff. It might not be enough pops down the subjugate. Tally's in trouble. Squiggle getting low. Flashes through, gets a nice proc of the Q, but that means Tally has a flash available to go over the very large wall. Yeah, Tally barely makes it out alive. You can see the strength that Squiggle currently has on this Shen, even with just tank items, because the Q, if it passes through you, increases his damage massively. Sin, they are still actually pushing forward with this one. Inhibs are up. The Shen's beating the Trundle. There's actually Legacy on the back foot. Very surprising turn of events to say the least as Sin. Now looking to control the map. Moving into this mid lane tower, Juice takes a little bit of damage, not too much. It's gonna be very, very hard for Juice to clear out these minions. Yeah, they've got a lot of poke now coming out of the Ezreal and Victor. And their team composition's been given enough breathing room so that they can actually find an opportunity to prosper. It doesn't mean that they're ahead in this game. It actually still means that the gold lead hasn't changed since the Baron's been taken. Legacy's still trading well enough as we get to see this one again. This time Carbon is off at the Gromp. So, of course, Tally would have the backup should he require it. And now the question is what past this point? Where does Sin actually look to get anything done? Their kills are on the right members of their team. Mm -hmm. They probably want a team fight. Team fighting against... Chuchu's on his Cassie up here and Siva for King. That's tough to do. They need to actually get the kills immediately through the burst they have. If they don't, could backfire. We had a Baron helping them out last time, but he's not going to be around forever. Baron buff has fallen off. Now Sin, they're looking to try and find a lane that they can really force here, but Legacy are all over it. So Rogue still being level 10 could actually be a poor thing for them. True. He's being exploited a lot with that ultimate being forced. They can actually push him out with the damage they have. Remember that the mid lane inhibitor is still open, so Legacy do have a way to get into the base. It feels like, though, we have a massive respite. Yes, they have that way in, but I don't think Sin are going to let them pass that point. It comes down to how they establish vision first. And right now, it looks like they're targeting the top side of the map where they've got a wave that they need to maybe push in. But they've placed all the necessary vision to spot Sin if they respond or cheekily try and cheese them. At this point in the game, it all comes down to how you set up because there's nothing free in the middle of the map. A lot of prep work going into this right now. Rai does get the tag onto Choose. Kuden is there. Ultimate actually goes down to Chaos Storm. They really want to go for this one. Juice, the ultimate is there from the Shen. Do they have enough to take it down? Choose expends his own. Both teams just going to back off. Choose wasting his ultimate. And I would have said that Rheinmeister wasted his, but I'm pretty sure the way the interaction works with Braum is that it blocks it so that it lands in front of you opposed to behind you. Kind of makes sense. It's a bit interesting the way Braum does that. No one's there to deal with Tally, though. He should be able to get this tower as Squiggle might be a little bit late to the party. Yeah, he's going to get the turret. Taunt aside. Oh. The question is, does he live after this? Yeah, he does. He's fine. He just walks his lane. way out of that one, loses the bot lane inhibitor turret. Legacy, remember, they set up quite well for this top lane push. A lot of wards being placed. Victor Ultimate still not off cooldown, but looks like Cassiopeia's is relatively the same length. Yeah. I mean, we've seen that Squiggle can fight Tally, but Tally can still take the turrets away from him. This game, it doesn't necessarily even feel like it's on a knife's edge. It's still Legacy in power, but they just conceded a single Baron through a misplay. What we have learned from this, though, is that Sin have the capabilities to team fight. The biggest breaking point to me, though, is that they need to void stuff on that Victor sooner rather than later. Narrowly avoids securing his own red buff as Tally. Quite handily takes that one away. Two open inhibitors now have Sin found themselves with. Actually, need a last Whisper on Ezreal as well. They're missing their penetration items here on the side of Sin. The team fighting, whilst you could look at uh, the opposite side of Legacy and say the same thing is reflected, mm -hmm. Choose only has damage items, I actually still feel like he's far more valuable in these fights. Rheinmeister needs the Void Staff to be killing people. That's his job on the team right now. So the King will make up for that, Tally will make up for that, even Carbon will make up for that with his AP build in the way of damage dealt. 
it's really important that Rymeister does his solo carry. Look at the damage though, just one Volatile Spiling does to Raps. Up at the top we saw King, Force uses his ulti to escape from any incoming danger. That was a lot of damage out of that W. That <laughs> really was. He's got himself the Proto Belt, Runic Echoes. It looks Whoa. like they've got themselves King here as he comes a little bit too close for comfort. Rogue is able to punish him with the headbutt, does get spell shielded away, staggers his Q to King. ensure the knockup comes through. King not playing around vision. So Sin right now, they're looking to start this up. There's only going to be three members of Legacy there. Tally's job is actually to keep Squiggle busy or get the inhibitors. Sin have limited options right now. Juice flashes in, but Rose flashes out and poor Squiggle just gets beat to death at his own Nexus. They have to do something soon or else Tally's just going to take That's their whole one. base. One in Hibs down right now. They might get back and defend this. It looks reason unreasonable as they're not letting them recall. The second inhibitor should be saved here though from Sin. The question is, do they lose the Baron whilst they try and defend that second inhibitor? Oh! <laughs> Hello! Just a quick drive by here up into the top lane, but it's enough to force Legacy to back off from any ideas of grandeur for that Baron. But we saw Squiggle... Tally's not done, though. We saw Squiggle beating on Tally, and all of a sudden, Tally just runs him down from bot lane outer to Nexus. Yes, and now he plays around this Sin. They have to go back to base. They have to defend this. And once Tally sees them, he should actually run. Should run. And then Legacy start the Baron. This is the way that it's going to go, the trade-offs. Tally has teleport, but Squiggle's here. We'll see how he plays it. They have to make a decision quickly or else Tally's just going to buy them too much time and the Baron will go down. Look at Tally right now. He's surviving for as long as he can. They should get him. One more attack should do it, but Squiggle being a nice body blocker right now. Tally, one more Q. There it is. He secures it, but Baron goes down. Yeah, we saw the plus 300 come up on your screen. That was the Baron being taken by Legacy and such is the trade that they wanted to make. 50 seconds is how long you have to wait for that Trundle to be available. And when he is back, the teleport is up. So Legacy establish control of the map now, re-establish it further out than the Baron. And set yourself up nicely with that mid lane inhibitor and top lane wave. So Legacy found themselves 11,000 gold in the lead now. So Sin, they look like they were gonna catch back up and all of a sudden Legacy just re-evaluated the state of the game, understood how they're gonna go about winning it and did just that. Tally doing a great job of proving to be a very immobile object in that bot lane long enough yeah. that they were able to take that Baron away, get themselves the third dragon of yeah. the game. I mean, it was essentially even Legacy just stopping a team fight from happening. We yeah. saw Sin win a team fight, and Legacy's response is not to bother doing that again. Why would you bother actually having a fight when you can force them around the map, utilize the Trundle, one of the champions that I'm shocked we haven't seen much of Tonight, at least, such an overwhelmingly strong champion at the moment because he can be a tank, he can split push and win 1v1s against tanks due to his ultimate. So much sustain, so much damage. Actually just does it all. No one quite, no one does that job quite as well as good old-fashioned Trundle here. Now he's got his sight set on that mid lane inhibitor or the other four uh, up at that top lane. Here comes Juice. Juice. He's got the Shen on his backpack, looking to go for the taunt. They found themselves onto King. He's still alive though. Juice gets taken incredibly low. Squiggle on the back gets stunned up with no hope. Oh, Ride King. goes down. Uh, Rek'Sai goes down. Now Rogue in full retreat. Legacy looking to end it right here and now. A cute little play from Sin to keep themselves alive for a little bit longer, but it's not going to matter. Squiggle. Just going to die here to carbon. Yeah, Squiggle's going to go down eventually. I think they're just giggling amongst each other. The minions are pushing on the bottom side of the map. They don't actually need that mid lane inhibitor. They should just end the game with the minions already there prepared for them. Legacy looking good. Kuden and Carbon just chasing down. Poor little raps here. Well fought by Sin. Game one showed us something completely new out of them and was able to take a win off Legacy, but in the end, Legacy stay true to their strengths as a team and come out on top. Yeah, Sin fought hard. They found themselves a victory against Legacy, but when it came to the crunch, the experienced team, the experienced shot calling of Carbon and his friends actually just came out superior. They gave Tally Trundle. Trundle runs away with the game, and it didn't really matter what Sin were able to do by that point. 
It was very, 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 very well played, of course, by this legacy squad, just constantly causing everyone from Sin to yeah. scratch their heads and think, do we go for the Baron? Do we go for Tally? Then at the end, it was too late for both options, really. Yeah, absolutely. Again, I have to commend Sin. That game one strategy was nice to see from them something different, but it's not enough. All righty, guys. We're going to send it back to the desk to break down the final series of tonight. Thanks, Rogi. Great cast on the night. And with that, it is going to be Legacy retaining their OPL title as well as taking down Sin. You know, it took three games. It went to about 38 minutes. But I'm going to bring it right back to the start and just say they went towards standard lanes again. And we just saw pretty much a mirror of what happened in game two. Biggest thing I wanted to point out is that they had... Okay, they're going to standard lanes and they have zero priority in any lane. Like, Trundle's going to push in top. Cassio's going to push in mid. And then bot lane Sivir, like, that's just not going to happen. So, of course, uh, you even see, like, at least going in for a jungle, like, yeah. pretty much, like, try to steal red, try to, like, pretty much beat up Rek'Sai. That's, they had bad matchups throughout the game. I mean, yeah, because because they had those three lanes, like, pushing in all the time, mm -hmm. like, yeah, as you see, like, he went in for the red buff, contested it, and that just means that his lanes can keep doing that. Like, there's no pressure from Rek'Sai being able to gank from anywhere, because at least he's just keeping a track of him, so... It's like those lanes just get to push their advantage more and more. And disaster really struck because, you know, if you're Jews and you have three pushing lanes, you have like one moment to be able to get that back to uh, even. And that is with a flash on Burrow. But as he gets invaded, he loses out on that flash. He loses so much time and he's ready. He's not able to get it done. But one thing I do want to point out is, you know, credit to Legacy. They're playing this 4-1 style and much better playing towards the map. Whereas, you know, Tally, especially in that game, was prioritizing, you know, not necessarily killing people, but just getting priority, you know, getting the waves in the right spot to be able to let Legacy set up everything else. Yeah, and that seems to be a constant with Legacy is that they play towards Tally. That Tally is always given the space to pretty much let his team do whatever. And that ultimately resulted them in getting Baron too. So he's playing a lot He's doing a lot for his team. Yeah, I mean, we talk about that it got them the Baron, but I mean, like, it got them the second Baron. Because, <laughs> yeah. like, if you look at the first Baron, they kind of tried to do the same thing, except they kind of just got sucked into a fight and ended up losing and, like, losing Baron. So they almost decided to pull an AV and go for that Baron and throw, yep. but so luckily they still came out with the win. Yeah, they do come out with the win, but one thing I do want to point out is, you know, second week in a row, Legacy's gone into game one, dropped it in pretty... Uh, Strange fashion, to be honest. You know, both of them being pretty resounding victories for the other team, but then has yeah. slowly pulled it back. You can see that, you know, this is a team that when they get down, they don't really lose that focus. They are able to battle through. They got to be feeling a little paranoid, though, right? Because, of course, now surrounding them is tough, tough composition from Direwolves and Chiefs. So it's, especially losing games to Sin is going to be pretty rough for them. Yeah, I mean, and I guess as a from Tainted Minds, I know best that uh, always losing the first game isn't good. So you're almost like, going into a best of three, one game down. So, I mean, they kind of have to look at that. Maybe they're just, like, going into game ones, like, seeing what the other team can do and, like, trying to see if there's anything, you know, hidden, like what Sin did in game one with their pick comp. So, they're either trying something or they need to, like, fix out, like, game one issues. Yeah, they're starting in a little bit of a hole and need to dig up all that more quicker. However, guys, as we take a look at the results from the week, we did kick off on Monday night with Abyss Esports picking up a 2-1 victory over Tainan Mines. Then Diables took down the Chiefs in a 2-1 victory. The only 2-0 of the week so far is going to go to AV tonight as they beat down the Hellions. And then Legacy do pick up the 2-1 victory and retain their OPL Legend title over Sin Gaming tomorrow night at 6pm. It's going to be Rosie's Tainted Mines taking to the Rift versus Hellions Esports before the Chiefs Esports Club round out Super Week with a game against Abyss Esports. However, guys, remember they are all battling towards that top four position. As we take a look at the standings, Legacy reclaim the top spot. Six and one, they have the head-to-head -head over the Diables, who are second. Chiefs are four and two. Avant are four and three, and just on their heels, Chiefs really need a victory tomorrow night if they're going to keep the others at bay. And Abyss, they're knocking on the door with Tainted Minds and Sin. And Hellions, unfortunately, are still looking for that first victory guys and you know this is going to be one of those hard moments for Hellions because they've got some soul searching to do as they go towards this of course guys they are all battling towards the OPL grand final just going to remind you one more time August 13 Korea Mail Piazza it's in Brisbane Queensland get along to it and get your mates as well if you're not able to make it to Queensland our good friends at Hoyts do have some viewing parties going on so purchase a ticket at one of your lo local Hoyt cinema however that is all the OPL action we have for you tonight on behalf of myself the analyst desk the shoutcasters and the entire production crew thank you so much for tuning in and we'll catch you tomorrow night